So let's build our frame. I went ahead and printed out the templates and put them together. Uh, I want to show you what I'm actually going to use to cut it out with. It's a drywall bit. It's a guide point drywall bit. Looks kind of like an end mill for a CNC machine. It's used for drywall cutting around like electrical boxes, outlets, lights, what have you. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to chuck this into my drill and I'm going to use it as an end mill like a CNC except it's human powered and there's no numeric control. I'm just going to push the material through and cut the wood. What's nice about this is since it's got a guide point where the flutes actually end, I'm able to adjust the height of the bit and that actually controls how fast the wood will get cut through if you don't adjust it enough the cutter will actually grab the wood and it'll be hard to control if you don't put it down deep enough then you won't be able to cut it at all it will just overheat the bit and we're just gonna push it through and we're gonna come as close to the edge as possible we're going to leave a little bit exposed and then I'll come back with you know a die grinder or sandpaper or, or belt sander dremel tool with a, a, a sanding disc and then we'll be able to clean it up and it won't quite look CNC but it'll look pretty close it, it'll look pretty nice if we put any effort at all into it and these are just drywall cutter bits you get like four in a pack, five in a pack for seven, eight bucks. Get them at Lowe's or Depot. So we're going to go ahead and glue this onto the board. So this is my material. It's three millimeter, eighth inch plywood birch from Michaels. Uh, you could probably get it anywhere that sells crafts or a hobby store. It's actually made by Ravel Monogram. I've joined my pattern and cut it out a little bit. I'm going to be able to use this section and, and use that section. I need two pieces so I'm going to cut out the top, stack it, cut out the bottom, and I'll actually be able to cut the profile out all at once so both pieces are the same. I'm going to glue it down and once I get it cut out I'm going to move the entire cutout, move it there and I'm going to cut it out again. Again like I said so I have two pieces that I can cut out at the same time and I'm going to join them together using screws. I'm going to use some CA glue, it's just gap filling CA glue I'm going to move this up a little bit just to give me kind of a, a point of reference of where to start gluing. And I want to use liberal mounts to get it stuck to the wood really well. Just put it on bunches of it. Don't have to be careful here, just throw it on there and then, and then lay your template onto the wood into the glue and then press it down you don't want any bubbles so make sure you get all the bubbles out if they form underneath the paper you need to be careful here because the CA can release fumes that are harmful to the eyes so if you have to if you're you don't know what you're doing use a respirator and some goggles and then I'm actually going to go back where I missed the edges and I'm going to lift them up with a razor blade and apply more glue. I want the edges to adhere firmly to the board, especially where we're cutting, because if not, then it's hard to actually see the line that you're trying to cut or sand to and it can flare up. So I'm going to just gonna fin finish this out, make sure all my edges are good.
I'm going to go ahead and cut it out now. I'm not going to show it. So these are the two pieces cut. As you can see, it's not anything particular. I just made sure I was able to cut the profile out without actually cutting any of the lines off. And then I just cut another piece that was about the same size. And I'm going to actually put them together. I'm going to drill some holes, two holes, and that will allow me to screw them together so that they stay together and they don't move while I'm cutting them. I'm going to go ahead and cut the entire thing out. I'm going to drill all the holes and then I'll separate them and then cut the, the insides out of the top. So I'm going to take my mechanical punch from Harbor Freight and I'm going to make a couple uh, punch holes. I'm actually going to punch all my drill points so that the bit doesn't walk. And these center marks are marked for you so there's no guesswork. Just punch them out. Okay, so I got everything done. Alright, so I have it secured together with two screws and two nuts. I drilled two holes, inserted the screws, inserted the nuts, and then I cranked them down because I kind of want to suck the screw heads in so they don't, you know, they don't bother me when I'm trying to cut it. So this is a drill press. I got to set it up. This is the towel bit, and, and if you look, I don't know if you can see it well, but I actually have a little bit of the part of the bit where it starts smoothing out, and it doesn't have the flutes sticking up to help me control the feed rate so that it doesn't grab the wood and want to pull it. I'm going to kick this on. And I'm just going to press it into the wood. And it's going to jump on me a little bit, but you press and you hold and you'll get a feel for it. And you just start pushing that cutter around. Push that wood through that cutter. And you don't want to come right to the line, you want to just come near the line because you're going to come back and want to sand that all down nice. It takes a little time to do this, but I find this works really well for me. I can make radius cuts easily. I can cut in tight corners. Things that I really can't do with a bandsaw or scroll saw for when I don't have them, so I have to use what I have. But I just take my time and, and get as close as I can without actually touching the line. It's very important. So I can sand it the final shape. I just keep pushing it through. I let it tell me how fast it wants to cut. I don't shove it real hard. I just shove hard enough to where to start eating and I let the cutter cut. If you push too hard it can overheat the bit and actually cause the bit to break. As you'll see right here. Coming up. There it is. Push too hard. Heated the bit up and broke it. So I put a new one in, and then we'll go ahead and finish this up. Doing this in real time, you can see how smooth it cuts. You need to be careful with your hand placement. You don't, you don't want to get your hands in the cutter. That suck. I'm about to get it cut out. I'm 
That's all she wrote. Go ahead and knock the edge off a little bit. That's a frame cut out. Now we're going to take it and we're going to sand everything that we can on a belt sander. And then I'll come back with a Dremel with a small radius bit on it.